In this video, I'll be teaching you everything about Roblox scripting. Well, at least the basics, in only 14 minutes. So scripts are the lifeline of your game. Scripts tell your game what to do, and without scripts, you don't have a game. So in Roblox, there are three kinds of scripts. Server scripts, local scripts, and module scripts. Server and local scripts both execute code. Server scripts run code on the server side that can affect all players, while local scripts are run on the player's side, affecting only the client they are executed on. And module scripts contain code that you can reuse across multiple scripts. The most important thing you need to know is how to create a script, because if you don't know how to create a script, well, you can't really code anything. So to add a script, you want to open up the Explorer panel, which you can do under the Home tab. And you want to click the plus sign beside Server Script Service and insert the script. Then you want to open up the output window, which you can do by going over to the script tab and pressing the output button. This will allow you to see any errors or outputs from your scripts. Now I'm going to run through as many basic topics as I can really, really quickly. So the first topic is printing. So printing allows you to output text to the output window. And when you open up a script, the default text that you can see is print hello world. So this is how you print text to the output window. You use the print command. So we write print followed by a set of brackets and then quotation marks. And then within these quotation marks, you will put in the text that you want to print. I am cool. So that's what I'll print. Since we're only running scripts, we can switch the play mode to run and we can click the play button to test out the script. And as you can see in the output window, we have two things that are printed. The first one is hello world and the second is I am cool. Next up is properties. So properties are basically characteristics of objects in Roblox and you can change them through scripts. So let's say I had a part. Now this part has many different properties like brick color, material, transparency. Now I can change these properties through the property window over here by inserting the new value. But I can also change them through a script. So for example, if I want to change the transparency of this part through a script, I would just go into the script and reference the part by doing game.workspace.part because the part is found inside of the workspace and everything is inside of game. And then I will reference the property by doing dot transparency because we want to change the transparency and we set the new value of the transparency. So let's say I wanted to make it semi-transparent. So transparency is a value between zero and one. So half transparent would be 0.5. So we use the equal sign and we set it to 0.5. Now when I run the script, the part will be semi-transparent like it is right now. Next up is variables. So variables are basically just names that hold values. And you can define a variable by doing local and then your variable name. So let's say I wanted a variable to keep track of my favorite number. So I could just create a variable, call it favorite number, and I could set it to 10. So now whenever I reference the variable name favorite number, it will give me the value of 10. For example, if I print the value favorite number, so I can do print favorite number, it will print 10 to the output window. So let me just go ahead and run that. And as you can see, it does print 10. Now, keep in mind when you're printing out variables, you don't use the quotation marks in between. If you do, it will think you're literally trying to print out the text favorite number. So if I run the code now, it will print favorite number and not the value that I want. So that's variables. It allows you to keep track of values which you can assign to a name. So next up is functions. So functions are basically blocks of code that you can write that will accomplish a specific task. So let's say I had a game feature where I need to add two numbers together. So I can create a function that I can call that will perform this operation so I don't need to repetitively copy and paste code and I just need to call the function. So I can create a function by doing local function. Then we have the function name. So my function is going to add numbers. So that's what I'm going to name it. And lastly, we're gonna have brackets. 
And don't forget to add an end at the bottom over here to close the function. So in the function, we're going to write the code that will be executed. So I will just create a variable that will keep track of the result. And let's say I want to keep track of one plus one. Maybe I want to print the result to the output window. So I'm just going to do print result. Now, when I run this code, nothing is going to happen because I haven't called on the function yet. And you can call on the function by doing add number. So you use the function name followed by the brackets. So here at the top, we are defining the function and what it will do. And then on line six, we are calling the function. So we're telling the script to execute the code inside of this block. So when I run the script, it will print out two because it calls the function. It computes the answer of one plus one, stores it in result, and then prints the result to the output window. All right, so next up is if statements. And if statements basically allow you to check whether a condition is met. So let's say I had a variable called temperature, which will keep track of the temperature outside. And I will set it to 20 degrees. So I'll say if temperature is less than 20, we'll print it is cold. So what this is doing is the if statement will check if temperature is less than 20. And if it is less than 20, it will execute the code inside of the block. So in this case, it will print it is cold. So actually, let me make the temperature less than 20. So I'm gonna make it 10 degrees and we'll see if something is printed to the output window. And it is. It prints it is cold because temperature is 10, which is less than 20. So when the if statement compares the two values, it is comparing 10 and 20. But if I change the temperature to 30 degrees, it becomes hotter than 20, meaning this condition here is not met, meaning the print statement will never run. So when I run it again, you won't, you won't see anything inside the output window. You can also add an else block inside of this if statement. So you can add an else block over here and basically it'll run the code inside of the else block if the conditions are not met. So if it is not cold, I will just say it is hot. So now when I run the code, it will check whether temperature is less than 20. And since 30 is not less than 20, it will skip this if block over here and it will go to the else block. So when I run it, it will say it is hot. All right, so next up we have tables. So a table is basically just a data type that allows you to hold multiple values. So you can create a table by doing local, local my table. So you can name it whatever you want. And you create a table by using curly brackets. And inside the curly brackets is the items that you're gonna have inside. So I can store a bunch of different kind of things. So maybe I'll store a list of different fruits. So banana, and you separate the elements, so the objects inside your table with commas. So banana, apple, and orange. So I can print this table to the output window and I can show you what it looks like. So when you run the code, it shows you this set of brackets and you can open it up by clicking on this arrow. And you can see the individual elements inside of the table. So you'll notice the square brackets on the left side over here where it says one, two, and three. And these are basically indexes and they just tell you the position of the elements inside your table. So banana is the first item, so it has the index of one. Apple is the second item listed inside, so it has the index of two. And since orange is the third item, it has the index of three. Now, if you wanted to, you can add items to the table. And you can do that by doing table.insert then you put in your table name, so my table, and then you can put in the element which you want to put inside. So kiwi, I will add the kiwi to my table and I'll print the table again after inserting the element. So when I print it again, you can see the first time it prints out, it, there's only three items inside. And after I added the kiwi inside the table, there are four items. Next up is built-in functions. So Roblox has a bunch of built-in functions that they have created for you to use. So I'll just go over two of them really quickly right now. 
So the first one you've already seen, it's the print function. And to recap, it just allows you to print stuff to the output window. So it allows you to print text, it allows you to print numbers or whatever you want. So if I print that, it will print the two things that I asked for. So this random set of letters and then this number over here. Another really useful Roblox built-in function is task.wait. And this allows you to pause the current script while it's running. It allows you to pause it for your predetermined amount of seconds. So let's say I had some code and I wanted to wait before anything happens. I could do task.wait and then the amount of seconds I wanted to wait for. So let's say I'll print hello. I'm going to wait three seconds and then I'm going to print bye. So when I run this code, it will print hello and then it'll wait three seconds before printing bye. And there we go. It waits three seconds before printing bye. And lastly, we're going to talk about events. So events are these things that happen in your game that you can listen and react to. So an example of this would be the touched event, which fires when a part touches another part. So let's say we have this part over here and all parts have a touched event. So I can connect a script to this part and listen in for its touched event, which will fire when anything touches this part. So what we can do is we can actually create a kill brick for this. So first I will reference the part by doing local part equals game.workspace.part. So then I'll access the event, the touched event by doing part.touched and then I'm going to connect a function to it. And if you're wondering what this other part keyword in here, it's called a parameter and it's basically a value that gets passed on to this function when this event is fired. So in this case, it will be the other part that's touching this current part. So first I will check if it's a player. So I'll do local humanoid equals other part find first child humanoid. Then I will check if this humanoid actually exists. So if the humanoid actually exists, we know that this is an actual player. And then lastly, to make this a kill brick, we will set the humanoid's health to zero. So now we can test the game. So when I play the game, it's going to listen in to the touched event and it will execute this code inside the block when it gets touched. So when I play the game and I go over the part, it will find out that I have a humanoid and then it will set my humanoid health to zero. So as you can see, it sets my character's health to zero and then I get destroyed. So yeah, that's events in Roblox Studio. So this was a super quick rundown on the basics of Roblox scripting. I highly recommend you check out my other video which goes into greater detail or my course where I show you how to master Roblox Studio and create your very first Roblox game. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.